Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Outside, going through some of my plants, trying to pick out some trailers to use in some fall arrangements, and I realized the only thing I really have to work with here is my Creeping Jenny. I realize we've never talked about that here on the channel before, which is kind of absurd because if you've been around this channel very long, you know, I use a lot of Creeping Jenny. It's a beautiful, versatile plant that can be used in all different kinds of applications. So I thought this would be a good time to go ahead and talk about it. Do a little bit of a rundown here on this awesome plant. Lysomachia pneumolaria. These are an evergreen to semi-evergreen perennial hardy zones. Three through eight, sometimes I see three through 10, four through eight. There's some variability in there for their hardiness. Take anywhere from part shade all the way up to full sun. The amount of light they get can affect the color if you have the Aria variety, which is this gold, like the one here that you see on the screen. They only get about two inches tall, sometimes a little bit more bushy, but they'll trail and spread up to two feet, sometimes even more than that. And they're listed as non-toxic, which is fantastic, but I always say the same thing with any plant, no matter how safe it seems, keep it away from curious mouths just to be safe. You never know how each individual body is going to react. As I mentioned, one of the things that I love about the plant so much is that it's versatile. This is a really adaptable plant. You can use it in a lot of different settings. Like I said, it can go from part shade all the way up to full sun. It can be grown in an aquatic setting like this where I have it draping over this fountain. You can have them in uh, ponds and bogs. I have one I'll show you here in a minute. Or the more traditional way, the way I usually grow them is just coming over the edge of a pot. A nice tall slender pot with some Creeping Jenny coming down the front looks fantastic. Now this one right here, it looks a little bit more ratty. This is a couple of just little, I think they're just little four inch nursery containers that, you know, I had some health things going on and people who had to come around and water plants for me and I decided instead of having them having to water these, I went ahead and just tossed those into the top of this fountain. They're still in their nursery containers. It was just one less thing for them to have to worry about taking care of. So down here is where I have the bulk of my Creeping Jenny. This is where I pull from when I need to use it in other arrangements. It might be a little bit loud with the fountain in the background. I apologize if that's the case. Look at this. It's just beautiful. It has the dainty foliage. It grows down like a chain, just cascades with such a nice tight habit across the front of pottery. That's one of the reasons I like it so much. Even though their flowers aren't the most impressive, they're just tiny little yellow things. The foliage on its own, I think is quite impressive and beautiful. It can add a, a very fine detail to wherever it's been placed. Now, one thing that comes along with versatility and ease of growth sometimes is invasiveness. So that is one thing to keep in mind. In some places, Creeping Jenny can be invasive where I live, that's not really an issue. It's fairly easy to control it as long as it's not in your lawn. When it gets in your lawn, that can be a little bit more difficult. For the most part, you can just come in here, pick this up and pull it out when it gets to be too much. Like I said, if it's in your lawn, that can be a little bit more difficult to deal with though. But again, this also has its advantages, makes it very easy to propagate. Creeping Jenny will root basically anywhere that the undersides of the growth comes into contact with soil. So I don't know how it's going to show on camera, but there's some tiny little white roots coming out there. That's just where, see where the leaves intersect? Where those intersect, where they're on the stem, where they've come into contact with a, basically just any moist surface, they start to take root. To propagate them, you can quite simply just pull some up, break it into smaller pieces. You don't want them to be too big. I'd say anywhere from like two to four inches long. Lay them on top of some damp, moist soil. Cover the top if you have humidity struggles, if you have some place really dry. If I'm trying to propagate a lot of these, then I'll just take a seedling tray, fill that with some soil, and I'll literally just lift this mat up and set it down on top of there, water it in, and within about a week, sometimes two weeks, I'll come through with a pair of scissors and cut it free, pull it out, and just cut it up, kind of like you would if you made brownies or something like that. Then I have a whole bunch of individual plants that I can scatter around into my containers or hanging baskets. The only other thing I wanted to note while I'm down here is you may notice, probably actually, maybe not since it's out of focus, but down here there's some Creeping Jenny. It's more of a dark color. It's just due to a difference in sunlight. Down there there's less light than there is right over here with this planter. All of the ones I grow are the Aria variety or the Golden Creeping Jenny, Golden Money Wart, whatever you prefer to call it. I actually prefer the regular green, but that can be harder to find. I pretty much only see the golden variety for sale, which is understandable because it, that lovely chartreuse foliage is very pretty, but I don't know. I am kind of a fan of just the regular dark green. But like I said, I don't really ever see that for sale anymore. Don't get too hung up with fertilizing on these plants. The main thing is to make sure that their soil stays consistently moist. 
it can dry out a little bit. It's not a plant that you have to really go above and beyond for when it comes to care. The main thing is just don't let them dry out for very long. Even though they like being in kind of an aquatic environment, whether that be a bog or growing in your pond or even in your fish tank or in a fountain, they can be grown just like a regular plant. You can toss them with your petunias and calibrax and zinnias, whatever you want. They'll usually do okay, but like I said, just don't want to let them dry out for too terribly long. You may remember some time ago in one of my videos, I pulled some huge sweet potato vines out of these planters right here. These planters that have windmill palms in them and these double impatiens. I just went ahead and threw some scrap creeping jenny in the front, and this is how much growing they've done since then. I know it doesn't look super impressive, but considering the care they've gotten, which is like, yeah, not much. I haven't really been doing much with anything in the front of my house this year. They're doing great. And one of the reasons I chose to switch over to the Creeping Jenny from the Sweet Potato Vine, not just because the Sweet Potato Vine was way too big for these planters. Where I live, these windmill palms will probably have to spend some time in the house during the winter months. Not too terribly long, but a little while. They're potted, so they're not going to be as safe from severely cold temperatures. I like the idea of having a trailer in here that I knew would be safe for my pets when I have to go ahead and Hold them inside, even though it's only going to be for a few weeks. And at that point, these won't have the impatience in them anymore. So it'll just be the creeping Jenny and I can lift that up, wrap that around the top of the swallow. Cause I mean, even if it's safe for the pets, I still don't want them eating it. And it's perennial. So uh, next year it'll be even bigger and more full. And the year after that, and the year after that, I just, it's nice to know that I'm not going to have to keep putting something new in here every year. Yeah, they haven't grown much, but they've only been in there for a few weeks and they were literally just plucked out of the ground where I was just out in the back before I just pulled some up and tossed them in there. That'll look better next year, right, Toby? One of the other uses I had mentioned is that you can put these into the ponds, which is, I think, a lot of fun. You can grow them marginally. Uh, supposedly you can grow them fully submerged, like in your fish tanks. I don't know much about that, but I believe it. I, they're tough plants, so I don't see why you couldn't. They'll provide oxygen to the water. They'll help shade things, help prevent algae and keep the water more cool. And it'll help provide lots of hiding places for any fry or anything you got swimming around in there. It needs some protection. And you don't really have to fuss with them very much. They just grow. Keep them in a soil that's not too compact. You know, you don't want to plant them up in straight up clay, even though they would probably still grow, but something that's loose and organically rich. That amount of moisture, they'll be okay. And when it comes to fertilizing, I don't really fuss with it too much. They just get normal fertilizing, just like my other plants do, once a month with an all-purpose during the growing season, and that's it. Prune it as desired, and pretty much a plant it and forget it sort of thing. Now, unless you live someplace where it might be invasive and then you need to keep a close eye on it. It's probably best though, if you do live someplace where it could be invasive, just maybe don't plant it, just to, you know, better for the environment. Oh yeah, there it is, the Creeping Jenny, one of my favorite trailers, one of my favorite perennials. I usually find them, mix them with the annuals at my nurseries, but they're not, they're perennial with where I live and where a lot of people live. Just get sold with the annuals because they're useful to use as a trailer for the front of the baskets or planters, those sorts of things. And they're cheap and easy to propagate, so it's easy to sell them as annuals. And then if you live in one of the zones like where I am, where they're semi-evergreen, it may seem like the plant is dying on you throughout the winter time and it'll kind of fizzle down to basically nothing in the springtime. Usually if you just go ahead and give that plant a good healthy drink, when the warmth arrives and the sun arrives, it'll come right back for you and get nice and lush again. The only other thing I wanted to mention is that these can sometimes be grown as a house plant. They're really great in terrariums and those sorts of things, but they do sometimes need a chill. Sometimes after like 18 to 24 months, they'll start to get a little bit scraggly looking. And if that happens, that might be a year to try and give it a chill if possible, or just a heavy cutback. Give it some sort of rest or dormancy, some kind of change to help kind of reset the plant. All right, if you have anything to add, put that down in the comment sections. Tip, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. It's how we all learn together. Go ahead and get your inner plant nerd on down there. Help spread some knowledge. Who's in zones three, uh, nine, and 10. The ones that are sometimes listed as a perennial zone for these and sometimes not. I mean, no, yeah, that's gonna do it. Creeping Jenny, fun stuff, easy to grow, great plant to have around. Let me know what some of your experiences have been growing this fun plant. I'm here in Thunder, so it is time for me to go. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.